I want to welcome you to clarinet lesson one. Um, I'm going to show you some of the basics about your clarinet, and especially in this very first lesson, I'm going to go to real basics and show you how to open your case. So, this is my clarinet case, and I want you to look at something. There is a dividing line that separates one side of the case from the other. And if I turn it this way, you can see there's still that line. That's where the case is going to open up. I want to put this handle on the bottom. If I tried to open this right now and pulled up on this, all the pieces would fall out and something could get hurt and we don't want to hurt anything. So this is my case. There's the dividing line. I'm going to set my case on my desk. I don't want you to put your case on your lap when you open it. Put it on the floor in front of you so nothing falls out. But I'm going to open this. And I just pull up on the latch and it snaps down. And when I open up the case, you can see the clarinet. I'm trying to hold it up so you can see. This is kind of like one of those, there's a different slot in here for everything and we don't want to lose anything. And we always want to make sure we put it back. So I'm going to set it here on my desk. I want to show you some things that are in this case. The first one is court grease. Every case for clarinet should have a tube of court grease in it. And we use this, it works, works kind of like a chapstick. You take off the top and you can see there is the grease in here and at the bottom there's a screw. Please don't just crank it the whole way open because all it's gonna do is waste it for you. And we need this to last a good long time. Don't use this as chapstick. That is not going to work, okay? It doesn't taste any good or anything. But we're going to be using that. I'm going to leave the cap off of it so you can see how I'm going to use it. What else is in here? I have a reed. Now, this reed is a size two and a half. You can see that down here on the bottom. And it's a Rico. I recommend size two and a half. You can go to a two. When you are first beginning, and this is lesson one, you don't want to do anything harder than a two and a half. So, I'm going to take my reed out of the case this way, and I have to be very careful with this end of the reed. It's very thin, and that's where it could become broken, but that's the part that we need to vibrate to help make the sounds. So I'm going to put it in my mouth, and you'll see this is a little hard to understand me, and that's okay. When I first start to get my case out, the first thing I do is put my reed in my mouth. The reason is for the reed to vibrate, it has to be damp through. If you just use a dry reed, it's very hard to do. Just because I'm talking to you, I'm gonna take it out for a little bit and I'll put it back in after a while. But when I go to put this reed away, here's my case and it has one side that has holes in it and it kind of presses down this way. And then it has a side that's totally flat. I want to make sure I take the totally flat side of my reed against the totally flat side of this case and very carefully where it's rounded here, I go to put the reed in and I gently slide it in so it's flat side to flat side and the rounded side goes up toward the top here and then it holds it in place. You don't have to shove it in the whole way to the end. You just want to shove it in so it's going to stay there. That protects the end of the reed when it's in your case, all right? Horn Smasher John did a really good job showing us how to put our instruments together and how to take care of them, but the one thing he didn't do that I frown on is he didn't take the time to wet the reed before he tried to make a sound. Now, because I know he was making videos, the reed was already wet. I'm sure it was because he probably had a little cup of water that he set it there in. And some people do that. They have a little tiny glass, they put some water in it, and they set the reed in it while they're putting stuff together. I prefer to just put it in my mouth. But since I have a little bit of time, I'm not going to put it in my mouth yet. I want to show you some more things about this clarinet case and what's in here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out some of the pieces and every piece that has a cork on it, this is nothing more than a piece of cork, every piece that has a cork, we're going to do this. 
we're going to put a little bit of court grease out, not very much, and I'm going to put some court grease on my cork. And once I put it on there, take my fingers and I rub it in a little bit. And I always make sure I have a tissue or a paper towel so I can wipe my fingers off and everything's not going to get sticky. I'll set that one back in. I'm going to pull out this piece. It has two corks on it. So I'm going to take my cork grease and I put some on here. Now you don't have to put tons and tons on there, but if your instrument is brand new, it takes a while to condition those corks. So I'm rubbing those ones in and rubbing this one in. And then of course I'm going to wipe off my fingers. I'm setting this down. The reason we put cork grease, this one has only one cork on it. The reason we put cork grease on the cork is the corks dry out after a while. And like this clarinet has been sitting all summer because it's a school instrument. And when they dry out and you put the pieces together, when you go to take them apart, they stick. And when you pull it off, you rip the cork. If you rip the cork, then you have to get, that's a repair. It's a maintenance thing. And we don't want to have to get a repair done. So we're going to take good care of these as much as what we can. So I'm going to set that back in and wipe off my fingers one more time. Good. The first piece we're going to look at, by the way, the clarinet has more pieces than the other instruments. So it's kind of cool. First one we're going to look at is the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece, when I first pulled it out, had this cap on it. That's just to protect the end of the mouthpiece in there. Some of these are black plastic. This one just happens to be metal. I'm going to take that off and set it aside. This is called a ligature. I'm going to unscrew it just so I'm not going to take these screws the whole way out. And by the way, if you ever do that, it's a little hard. See how I can do this? There's no threads in this part of the ligature. This side has threads for the screws. And if you take the screw the whole way out and then put it in from the other side, it doesn't tighten up because this side has no threads in it. And it would just be like this. This is what we use to hold our reed on. I'm gonna wait and put the reed on after we put the rest of the instrument together. So I'm gonna take, this is the mouthpiece. You can see it has a flat side. That's where the reed's gonna go is on the flat side. The next piece I'm taking out is the barrel. It is just, you can see through it. It has, one side is a little bigger than the other. The smaller side, I'm gonna put up against here and then I'm gonna gently twist it together. If you just try to force it, it's just really hard. It's not gonna to go together very well. So these are the first two pieces. The next piece has the two corks on it. And these are the things that are important. It has these keys and then this little piece right there. We wanna make sure we take good care of that so it doesn't snap off when we put the next piece on. But we hold it this way and our barrel is going to screw onto here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up this long key in the back with the flat part of the mouthpiece. Okay, so if I was looking at it this way, you see they line up pretty well coming down here. Good. Now, this little key that I said was out there, see it moving up and down? I'll turn it around. When I press on these keys, you can see it moves up and down. When I go to put the next piece on, I wanna be pressing on this so that piece goes up. So I'm gonna press on it right here. The next piece, you of course aren't gonna put two corks together. You put this piece together. Now, this little key goes up and down when I'm pressing on there. So I need to make sure I'm not pressing on there. So I'm gonna hold my clarinet way down here and you're gonna line up those two keys. So I'm pressing on this one so it goes up, gently twisting it together, and I lined up those two keys. I'm trying to find the best way to show you. See, they're on there. I apologize, my chair squeaks here as I'm putting this together. So that lines up all of these keys in the front. Now we have one more thing to do, and that is take the bell at the bottom, 
and I'm gonna gently twist the bell on. It doesn't matter if the name is up or not. I kind of like to line up the name. That's just how I do things. Okay, let me open this back up. So now I have a full clarinet put together. Now it's time for me to go back and make sure that my reed is wet. By the way, I have my court grease here and I wanna make sure that it's gonna stay good. So I put the cap back on it and I put it back down in the same slot where I took it out of in the beginning whenever I got things out. Now I'm gonna take my reed and do this. Sometimes I take my reed, I turn around this way, just to put enough moisture down through there so it's gonna vibrate well. It's only got my saliva on it, so I'm gonna lick it off. We, of course, are not gonna use other people's reeds or mouthpieces. That would just be very, very unsafe and unsanitary. Now I'm gonna take my reed and I'm gonna put it up against the mouthpiece so that it's flat side to flat side. And I lined it up just about exactly on the top. I didn't want the reed to go up over the mouthpiece. It's just even with it at the top. I'm right-handed, so I hold it with my left hand. And my ligature, I have to be very, very careful not to touch the end of the reed. I put my ligature down over, just like that. And the, the screws go right over top of the ligature. There's different kinds of ligatures. This is the one that most people have, and that's why we do that. Now, on the back of your mouthpiece, most of the time, there is a little line here. You wanna make sure that you have your screws loose enough that it goes down below that little line. And it's now down below that little line. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. But, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bottom screw and I'm gonna make it snug. Snug means I'm not gonna twist it till I, too tight. And the top one, I'm just gonna make sure that it's turned on here because I want it to vibrate well. Now, when I go to make the sound on the clarinet, and I'm sorry, I know this video takes a little while, but this is called your embouchure, how you have your mouth shaped. And when we play the clarinet, we put a little bit of the red of our bottom lip over our bottom teeth. And then you're gonna take your top teeth and put right on the top of the mouthpiece, and we close our lips around it, just like this. So, and I always wet my lips before I start, it just helps me. I'm gonna take that. Put my bottom lip over just a little bit, not like this, not an awful bunch, just a little bit of the red. And I put my top piece right on top of the mouthpiece, close my lips around it. How about that? That's the kind of sounds you'll gradually make on the, on the clarinet. In the beginning, we're not gonna do all that. Actually, getting this embouchure straight is the most important part. So we're gonna work a little bit on that. Right now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to separate these pieces from your clarinet. I want you to take the barrel off, the barrel and mouthpiece, and set them aside. We're gonna use those. And now we have all of these pieces together. There is something special that should be in your case, and it is a cleaner. My cleaner looks like it's cotton. It's like a handkerchief, and it's on a string. It has a little weight down here. You can actually make your own buying them. It's not that expensive to buy them either. We like this kind because you can easily put it in the sink with some soap and water and wash it up and take it back out so that it's not super dirty because we want to keep your clarinet clean. Now this is what we do. We take the string, drop it in the clarinet. I'm actually gonna take it the whole way down through all of these pieces. And then I get a hold of it here and I gently pull it through. What that's gonna do is take care of the condensation that's in here from whenever I was playing the instrument. Now I'm gently going to grab here and here, untwist and I'm gonna lay this piece in the case. Now remember 
this case has different slots and the pieces fit specifically in those slots. The next time, remember, I'm gonna to have to press this to lift up on that and untwist these. And I'm gonna set this piece back in and this piece I'm gonna put back in here. Now I'm gonna do one more thing and that is, and we always do this, you, you might wanna have a different rag because this one will get wet from the condensation that's inside your clarinet, but I'm just gonna use a tissue for today. I'm going to wipe my fingerprints off of the keys. And the reason I do this is we have a certain amount of acid in our skin, and that acid eats away at the finish. And since it's a nice shiny clarinet, the keys are nice and shiny, we wanna keep them that way. So let me turn this back up. By the way, when I'm all done with this, all I'm going to do is fold it a little bit and I'm going to wrap this around it and I stick it back down in this slot so we have everything together. Now, pick up that mouthpiece again. I want you to practice putting this reed on and off and putting your clarinet together every day. Every day this week, I want you to do that. And then I want you to practice making some sounds. Here's how we're going to make our sounds. Remember, bottom lip, just gently over your bottom teeth, not like this, just a little bit. And I always lick my reed. In between times, I lick my reed because if it dries out, then it's going to start squeaking for you. Put your top teeth on the top and close your lips around it. Now, I keep the edges of my lips a little tight. <laughs> That's the sound you're gonna make. It sounds pretty funny. But if you can get a good sound doing that, actually, I think if you have a piano keyboard, if you press the F sharp key, this should be an F sharp key. Don't do this. Bell call. Do you hear the difference in that sound? And this. Hear how low the other one was and how nice and high and crisp this one is? What I'm doing is I'm keeping the edges firm. When I do that, I'm not, I can't puff my cheeks if I keep the edges of my mouth firm. Inside my mouth, I use my tongue and I say, ta, 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 ta. Can you do that with me? Ta, 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 good. Now this time, I don't want you to say ta, I just want your tongue to go. go. Try that. Good. Notice we had a hole right here for the air to come out. That's where our clarinet goes. Now I want you to do. You try. If you're looking and your cheeks are puffing, hmm, we're doing something wrong. We got to keep those top teeth on. Some people want to lift them up and go. And you'll never get a good sound. Put those teeth on. That's what I want you to practice doing this week. Um, I left the barrel on the mouthpiece here when we were doing this because it makes it easier to hang on to the clarinet. So I want you to try different rhythms. You're moving your tongue for these rhythms every single time. Okay, now to finish taking this apart, we untwist these just a little bit so it will slide up off. By the way, don't put it like this, where this is up over the top and it's hanging onto the top here. We wanted to get it way down on there when we're using it. Take that off, take your reed, lick your reed off so it's good and dry, flat side to flat side, and just put it inside. Put that in the case. Now this piece, since I have the two of them together, I'm gonna do a similar thing. I'm gonna take the cord with the weight on the end. If you make one of these, you can just put a nut or a bolt or a nuts usually work better on there. I'm gonna pull it through the round section because it makes it easier to come through. That's gonna clean this out good. You wanna keep your mouthpiece good and clean. There's nothing wrong with rinsing some water through here too. Just avoid getting the cork wet. Once you have that cleaned out, take it apart. Wipe the fingerprints off your barrel. 
put it back in, take your mouthpiece, wipe it off. Now I'm gonna put the ligature back on, same way, tighten it some. I'm gonna take the cap and put it back on, and then I'm gonna lay it in the case. I'm laying it in the case right there. Okay, when I'm all done, I'm gonna take this cloth. Now, if this is really, really wet, you're gonna to wanna to let it you know, stay out to dry a little bit. You don't want it to get molded in there. Then we close the case, snap it shut, and we're ready to go. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Now, when you practice at home, I want you to practice 15 minutes a day. I prefer every day or at least five days. Don't wait until the night before you come back and then try to do that. It just isn't going to work, right? You should make sure you have a cleaner, make sure you have court grease, and make sure you have, I usually like to keep at least two reeds in my case in case something happens. Every once in a while a reed will break, and if it breaks, you're going to have to get a replacement reed. You might want to have a little stash of reeds at home so that you can always get one whenever you need it. Let me see if I missed anything. Oh. Do not put anything extra in this case. Don't try to squeeze a book or music in there. What it'll do is press down on the keys and we don't want those keys to get injured at all. All right, thank you so much everybody. This was lesson one for clarinets, beginner clarinets, and I'll see you next lesson. Bye now.